subscribe and hit the bell icon and never miss another video. It looks like I'm cheating because I'm wearing a brown skin beauty t-shirt, but I'm wearing my pajamas. I've got my calvins on, okay? <laughs> nice. I've also got my socks on. <laughs> and I've got, got a my teddy bear. bear. I'm ready. Hi, Anusha. Hi. Hi. How you Hi. Doing? Hi, Anusha. Anusha. I'm gonna ask you to turn your camera this way so we get you in horizontal mode. Oh God! You're <laughs> asking me to do the impossible. I don't there understand you go. There Hi. you go. Hi. Hi. Oh shit! Perfect. Wait. How do I see everybody? So you have to swipe until you get the full everyone view. You just keep swiping. Oh yeah, Molly. Hi. So thanks so much for doing this, Anusha. This is another Girl Tribe Virtual Happy Hour. We decided that even though we can't meet each other in person, we thought we would do this so that people from literally all over India and all over the world can come and hang out. Anusha, first of all, how are you doing? You have had quite a whirlwind of a year and you are killing it with brown skin beauty. Can I just tell you, I love how everything smells. I don't know if you guys have tried brown skin beauty, but the product just smell delicious. I just love Yay. having it on my face. No, thank you so much. Brown Skin Beauty has been honestly like a saving grace for me this year, this this pandemic year. And it's given not just me hope for a better future for women, um, to embrace all of us as beautiful. It doesn't matter what skin color you are, but it doesn't matter what skin problems you have. You know, uh, there's a beauty standard on um, social media that is photoshopped and, you know, filtered. And that's all fun and great for a little while, but it kind of gives this misconception that this is a beauty, un unattainable beauty standard. And um, I just kind of wanted to bring it right back to the roots where we look at ourselves without a filter and say, you know what, I'm still beautiful. And it doesn't matter what shade of brown I am or what kind of skin problem I have, this is me. And so I think, you know, for me also skin problems and, and just the outer exterior is not just the problem, it's internal. And we go through so much and that actually shows on your face as well. So without just having my brown skin beauty products to help the skin on the exterior, I really kind of started being really honest on social media and talking about, you know, the pain that we go through, you know, in life. Because I think if you don't fix that, it really shows on your skin as well. And mentally, physically. So, that yeah. is absolutely, absolutely bang on. And I think, you know, it's so funny because we actually connected over being like girl bosses and talking about how things function at work. And <laughs> You know, I always struggle with this concept of, you know, Women's Day because I love that we're celebrating women on a special day, right? Like, it's such a great thing. But it's like, yes, technically every day should be Women's Day. And I'm sure you get this question a lot about how does it feel being a woman entrepreneur? And very often I'm like, I don't know what it feels like to be a male entrepreneur. So I can just say what it feels like to be an entrepreneur. So how do you answer that question? And what do you think about this distinction, people? Um, I think I completely agree with you because... Uh... Everybody was like, what do you think about Women's Day and who do you want to wish? And I said, well, I just feel like it's something that should, that should be celebrated every day by us, ourselves. Celebrate. And it's always nice to be obviously wished on your birthday and Women's Day and all of that. Yeah. But I feel like being born should be something celebrated every day. Yeah. I think being a woman should be something celebrated. And I don't, I don't want to deny a man of being celebrated for himself as well. But I, I'm just saying that, yeah, it, it, it's kind of weird that we we make it such a highlight as yeah. if we were so inferior that we have to make ourselves feel kind of, you know, stronger and more powerful by celebrating it on a special day. But today, since it's a virtual happy hour, I like to do this where I let the other girls in the tribe ask questions. They get to do my job and I get to sit and watch for a change. And I just wanted to say thanks again because, you know, this is going to be one of the best memories of everyone in the lockdown. Rather than this year of sitting at home, we got to sit together, hang out, we got to chat with Anisha in a Zoom chat. So thanks so much for being part of this. And we got to be comfortable. Woo! And we got it's to be comfortable. <laughs> and also, yeah, like, absolutely. So my first um, guest 
host is Prashasti. Prashasti, will you unmute your mic? Tell us where you're from and you can ask your question. Uh, yeah, so my question is, uh, what inspires you the most, Anusha? And what or who? And what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages you might have faced as a woman in your career? <laughs> okay, so what inspires me as a woman, I think, is the fact that there have been so many doors and paths open for us, barriers have been broken. And I feel like it's our duty to continue that. And as a woman, I want to keep continuing that. Do you know? I want to keep kind of breaking any barrier I can and, you know, opening a door um, in any kind of small or big way. And I think that's what keeps inspiring me as a woman. And um, sorry, what was the second half of the question? I got really distracted by my dogs. <laughs> yeah, so it is uh, what advantages and disadvantages have you faced in your career as a woman? Um, I think the advantages, um, I don't, I'm not going to be negative about it. I, I don't know if there's so much as an advantage in such. I think my talent was the advantage, not being female. It was that my talent was, was good enough. My disadvantage, however, is pay. And I felt really, really shattered knowing that my male counterpart in every show was getting paid more than me, you know? And they're doing the exact same job with the exact same hours. And you know what? I'm standing way more uncomfortable than him. So first of all, it, I should just get paid just for that. <laughs> and then, and then um, on top of that, just knowing that I have the same skill or maybe even better. And, um, you know, I don't complain about my hours. I come on time. And just knowing that he was going back with a better paycheck was just so frustrating. It was like, why? You know? And so I think that was the disadvantage for me, which I have fought for. And now I don't take it. <laughs> oh, right. My next question comes in from Priyanka Moza. Priyanka, tell us where you're from and you can ask your question. Uh, when uh, when you uh, when you joined entertainment industry right as a VJ initial in initial days how tough was it for you uh, is my question uh, versus now when you are a seasoned professional I think look I'm, I'm gonna say that last year our industry got painted really terribly and I have no idea what was going on there um, but I will say this for now um, not just being a woman and I'm so glad that you just kind of asked a general question every industry is tough and you have to take the positives out of it um, if you want to be there right. but if I'm going to talk about um, the kind of struggles that I've had it's, it's funny because brown skin beauty kind of came from that also in the sense that I faced a little bit of racism when I was really young in Australia as like a five six year old kindergarten first grade I didn't know that I looked different because my parents never taught me that I was different. Everyone was the same for me. That's what I was taught. And, you know, so when I got called like chocolate milk and, you know, dark chocolate and stuff, I didn't understand what they were saying. So I'd run home to my dad and be like, I don't get it. So it was really beautiful that my parents kind of embedded that in me that everyone is the same. Um, and then when coming to my own country where I felt the safest because I was like, wow, I'm just around all my people. I felt racism here. And that was a really big struggle for me because the first things was like, why would you hire an NRI? I'm not an NRI. I just happen to live abroad, but I'm so busy, you know? And it was so hard to be accepted. And I had to kind of keep giving these reasons of why I want to be here, but this is my country. And I felt like I was kind of being singled out and I came home. You know, so I was again so confused. And then obviously, you know, you have an accent. Why do you why do you have a fake accent? And I'm like, I was born abroad. <laughs> I can't not the way I speak. <laughs> so I just keep justifying my accent. Um, you know, the way I kind of looked, and you know, just everything. My body language was different. You know, I did grow up in Australia where bikini culture was completely accepted. So I was very free. And I came with that same free spirit here. And it's weird how I had to kind of become more conservative to try and fit in, which now I'm trying to break again because I'm like, why? Why do I have to do that? So that was really a struggle. And if I talk about today, I think the same kind of struggle is just trying to, um, you know, show how far you've come without having to constantly tell your team, you know, that kind of, you don't want to demand respect. 
you want to command it, but it doesn't matter how hard you work. You know, that there, there are so many people that you, they want to compare you to, or they want to tell you, well, you know, they did it like this or they, and I'm like, well, I do it like this. So, you know, you hired me for this reason. So if you like it, great. If you don't, well, let's just part ways. So I feel like that constant explanation that we have to give and I, I say this, it doesn't just happen in this industry. I know it happens in business. It happens everywhere. Constantly having to prove yourself. But I guess that comes part and parcel and you just have to have really thick skin. And obviously trolling is something that really used to get to me um, because it's so easy for people to hide behind, you know, phones and laptops and just write oh. mean, terrible things. And I just think, I have to take the positive out of it and look at how far I've come and how confident I've become more and more with people calling me slut and prostitute and hoping that I get pregnant and my baby dies or if I get cancer. You know, people say these things, mean, mean things, you know, and you have to read that and it's not okay. But when you get through it and you realize that, okay, I'm gonna take this and I am now going to tell women how to t stay strong and get better from it so we can keep going. And so just, that's what I've learned. So, yeah. Next question is from Nikita. Nikita, tell us your question. Who is your experience being a beauty guru and judge on India's Next Top Model? Um, I think it was really, I, I'm really strict and I love people keeping it real. So you'll see me yell a little bit here and there. <laughs> But it was all for the positive. Um, I just want everyone to kind of do their best. If they're going to go for it, they have to do their best. So that was one challenge, like, you know, just kind of not seeing girls push themselves enough. And I learned a lot from that. And then the second is where Brown Skin actually got inspired, Brown Skin Beauty. From shows like this, where I had the most beautiful models standing in front of me, breaking down because of the color of their skin and what they've gone through. So whether it was bullying at home or at school or in college or not feeling adequate enough by their own family members and being told that they'll never like kind of get anywhere or get married or do anything. Kind of like those terrible fair and lovely commercials that tell you you can't if you don't use their cream. I mean, it's just, you know, so to, to see that and think, who is teaching them this? And, you know, I had to change that. And so I learned a lot from, from just that as well. Absolutely, I think this is one of a kind initiative for a country like India. That's amazing. And before we let you go, I asked all the girls in the tribe to write down a word they think of when they think of you. So they're going to hold up their words now. For wait, you can you just see. wait? Because I can't yeah. see everyone. How do I see everyone again? Just keep swiping until you see everybody. All right, okay, wow, I'm so All right, bad. so everybody hold up your words so she can see it. Spontaneous, oh, beautiful, filter-free, self-love, resilient, real, fierce. Oh my God, you're gonna make me cry. strong. Love it, thank you, ladies. Okay, a last message from you, Anusha, to the tribe that is all dialed in here and everyone who's watching live. Okay, first of all, that was so amazing. <laughs> thank you so much. I literally, I'm very emotional, so I <laughs> may start crying. Don't think I'm weird. Okay, I'm not gonna start crying. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanna say, you know, um, it's not just about Women's Day that we've come together. Malini, you are doing incredible things for women and you inspire me. You are not just a friend, you're somebody that I look to as, you know, a confidant and, um, you know, a sister. And sisterhood is so important, you know, when we like write all these messages on Instagram, like, you know, fix each other's crowns, we mean it. And, and Malini is that one person that, you know, I, I can feel that. And um, I want to tell all of you that you have brought so much positive energy into this chat. And I hope that you can spread this all throughout your life to so many people because, you know, how we pay it forward is so important. And life is like a domino effect. The more you give out there, the more you're going to get it back. And I had to realize that through this last, you know, four and a half years that it's really important from what we feel inside of us. And so keep loving you. Walk over to the mirror every day and say three things that you love about yourself. You know, 
stop being so unkind to yourself you know don't be so harsh on yourself and don't be um impatient you know live your dreams go for them and just kind of just embrace every single moment i have learned it and that's why i want to share it with you and if you share your experiences with women out there with your struggles and your happy times you know it's so much easier for all of us to stick together and get through it that is so so true such wise words and as you can see everybody is smiling and beaming thank you so much <laughs> for this initiative love you, you so, so much, much thank Anusha. you so much for being here with us today